Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in Westfield, New Jersey, and we got some cleanup work to do in the garage. And so I get referred to by a real estate agent here in town to fix these issues so the house can be sold. Today we are specifically looking at wiring like this, where you have a light, okay? Obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, this light works by the switch when you enter the garage door. Okay, so you turn that on, then it turns on that fluorescent light. The trouble is, there is a connector, so that's good, but it's not tight, okay? It's probably not grounded right either. We're gonna find out shortly. But the biggest issue here is this Romex wire running along the top. And it goes to this fluorescent light. So we are going to disconnect the receptacle that the light plugs into and is controlled by the light on the ceiling there okay we're just going to eliminate this stuff and if they want to put something new in the, in the future when they sit when they some the, when the buyers buy the house then uh, my information i'll leave on the electrical panel and of course you can call me we come back and do something new but i'm not going to leave it like this because it's unsafe and it's the fastest way to get this job done all right so the plan is to disconnect these two cables i'm not sure what they're doing but i'm pretty sure they're for the laundry room because the laundry room's on the other side of this wall right here and I know that because the door's open and nobody's here and I checked, okay? So this is the dryer circuit. So this is a 10-3 cable. And what this other one is, I'm not exactly sure. But the idea is to put a box over here and run one piece of conduit, okay, over to here. And what we'll, buy, what we'll do then is we'll join uh, two circuits through one conduit uh, using two different junction boxes to get that work done. So... I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, let's get to it. So just to get warmed up, the first thing I do here is I disconnect this old light setup. This is an extension box they used to extend the circuit along the surface right here. Not terrible. I thought I took a picture of the inside of what it looks like, uh, but the circuit was actually grounded uh, around the screw. It wasn't proper. So I disconnected it anyhow and uh, reattached a new uh, key, uh, pull chain up there. I know I didn't, I was supposed to use a keyless, but all I had was a pull chain. So I left it there in the on position and uh, that's what we did there. And then we disconnected and got rid of that other conductor going over to the fluorescent light. Okay, so I wanted to show you just how terrible of an installation this was, whoever did this. <coughs> okay, there's your dryer line in the laundry. Anyhow, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the circuit right here and somewhere over here and we're going to mount two junction boxes in a spot that's accessible um maybe i'll just get rid of this paint i'm not exactly sure all right obviously this one is the dryer because we saw it so we'll turn that one off but we don't know where the other one is okay everything's off now Thankfully, everything's off, and uh, I'm relying on this tech. I'm pretty confident with this tech. This is just a climb one, Home Depot style over right here, but it's a wonderful tool. Uh, if you don't know how this tool works, this tool, all, this, this, all that the Volt Tech does is it detects a magnetic field. Alrighty, so you press down this button here, and you can change the voltage sensing that it does. When it's blue, it's between. 12 volts and a thousand volts and if you go hit the button again it's good for 70 volts to a thousand vo thousand volts to a thousand volts and it just picks up a magnetic field so yes if you have long if you have high transmission lines in your neighborhood on a human night you can go over there and hold this tester and yes you'll pick up a magnetic wave Article 334 refers to non-metallic sheath cables, and the specific article that we're looking at here and reviewing is Article 334, TAC 15. In exposed work, except as provided in 3 TAC 11, 300 TAC 11B, cables shall be installed as specified in 334, TAC 15, A through C. And so I'm focusing on B, protection from physical damage. Cables shall be protected from physical damage where necessary by rigid metal conduit, intermediate metal conduit, Electrical metallic tubing, Schedule 80 PVC, or other approved means. 
when passing through a floor, the cable shall be enclosed in rigid IMC, EMT, or scheduled PVC at least six inches above the floor. So the reason why we're taking out this non-metallic sheath cable run along the ceiling is because it's exposed to physical damage. And we're going to cover these conductors with EMT to prevent any physical damage from occurring. For some reason, on this day, I didn't have my multi-tool, the oscillating tool. Otherwise, I would have used it to cut away this, um, I don't know, it's like a paneling finish over the sheetrock that's in the garage here. But I just wanted to make that hole a little bit larger so that I could have two different connectors attached to the back of the box to bring my conductors through. There's not enough room in the one connector physically to do the 10-3 and the 14-2 that's going to be in this box. So I just used my uh, a paddle bit and I made the hole a little bit bigger, just big enough um, to fit the connectors onto the back of the box and bring the cables through. Now I'm just going to bend a quick 90 degree um, stub on my half inch EMT bender and then you can see I just bend this section down a little bit just so I can get into the side of the box. Uh, working with EMT, this is about the, the extent of, that I work with. Uh, a lot of times in a house, if it's for stuff like this, I'll put EMT or maybe even PVC. I know you guys go crazy sometimes. Uh, and when I put the EMT, you say, why didn't you run PVC? And then when I run PVC, you say, why didn't you run EMT? I had EMT on my truck right here, and I thought this was the better installation on this particular job. So I'm going to use a piece of scrap and then I'm going to attach it to the ceiling and then I'm going to put a, a coupling after I temporarily hook up this strap right here. I'm just going to drive it as far as I can just so I have a little bit of space on that pipe coming down so I'm able to put the coupling on easy. Once that coupling is on, I start bending some new conduit, another section of conduit, uh, similar to the other side with a 90 degree bend and then just a slight kick to get into the to make up for the offset uh, going into the box connector or the connector on the box I should say uh, once that's done I'm able to start stripping my wires back and uh, we make a junction box we make a splice here and then we make a splice on the other side and we're basically just joining the two sides that we cut out so that we could add the EMT and away we go So here's my conduit, my ending conduit run. Okay. So we just put the box where we can cover up the wires coming through the wall so you don't see them anymore. And then, yes, there is a little bit of space of EMT between when I drop to the ceiling to the wall. There is a little space behind the conduit there. But as long as it's strapped within the first three feet, that meets the code for EMT conduit. Over here, there was less of a drop kick right there. And we come right in. Uh, the 90 degree sweeps is because the boxes, this box on this side and the other one on this side are like right in line with each other. And because this box here is flat and on the wall, we couldn't just come right into it, so we had to come into the side. Whereas over here, we came into the side, but we're on the ceiling. And when you're on the ceiling, that's why we ran these extra 90s to come away from it, just to get back in. So I am a little bit upset using this snake, uh, this fish, rather than the M18 mechanical fish tape that I have, because the cartridge got binded up inside the cartridge, uh, the, the fish rather. And so uh, I read some other reviews and this happened to a lot of people and they just stopped using it altogether, which is unfortunate. It looks like the way I'll be going too, because I'm not going to go buy this thing again for $200 and have it break, you know, after the fourth or fifth time that I've used it. So I'm a little upset with that piece, with that tool. Um, but here you can see I'm running three colored conductors and a number 10 equipment grounding conductors. And then of course the black and white for my uh, 15 amp circuit. 
and we're going to set it up on this racketeer um, conduit holder. We'll tape our conductors on, and I never even actually pushed this. I never actually pulled it. I just pushed it right through, which is another way of getting the conductors through with the fish tape. Uh, so that's how I accomplished that. And so I got I got a hot, I got two hots for the uh, 30 amp circuit, a neutral, a number 10 equipment grounding conductor, and then two. I got a white and a black for the 15 amp circuit. And uh, so the code says whatever the largest size conductors that you're using in the conduit, uh, one equipment grounding conductor can do multiple. It just depends upon the largest conductor. So the, my largest conductor here is number 10 AUG. So I ran a number 10 equipment grounding conductor. And that will bring the ground, the equipment grounding conductor for both of those circuits once we attach it here all together inside this junction box. So I tried to make them as neat as possible. That's it right there. We came back later on, put blank plates on it, obviously. Uh, we do the same thing right here with this junction box. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you got any useful information about it, out of it, let me know in the comments, and we'll see you soon with another video. Thanks for watching.